Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good to see three of you, the early birds. Uh, uh, can I ask Zilatoli to lead us in prayer, please? Okay, sure, Pastor. Thank you. Let, let me pray. Father God, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. As we begin our class, I pray that Holy Spirit, you will enable us to receive what you have uh, today for us. Lord, you bless our pastor. Uh, I thank you for the grace that you have given to her to teach us. And also, Lord, I want to thank you for each one of our uh, fellow classmates. I pray that, Lord, you will give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding so that we can understand your word, Lord, as pastor teaches, Lord, we commit our life. Our time, everything into your care and to Lordship. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Zeratoli. Um, so on Wednesday, we were looking at uh, the doctrine of uh, the Holy Spirit, and we completed that. We looked at the gifts of the Spirit uh, and how the gifts of the Spirit are a manifestation of the Spirit, and we looked at different aspects of the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, today, we'll begin uh, Chapter 9, the doctrine of the church. Okay, um, so what is the meaning of the word church? Or what is uh, what idea comes to your mind when you think about uh, the word church? What is the meaning of the word church, or what uh, idea comes to your mind when you think of uh, the church? The body of Christ. Okay, church is the body of Christ. Yes, Lubega? Two or more people gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Uh, so, and two or more people are gathered in the name of Jesus, then uh, we call that as a church. Or uh, like Zelatoli said, church is the body of Christ. Anyone else? What do you think about the word church or when or the word church, or when you think about church, what comes to your mind? What are different aspects that come to your mind? Any more thoughts? No more thoughts on the church, okay? Um, so the Greek word for uh, church is ecclesia. And uh, K. Lubega says church also consists of past, present, and future believers in Christ. Okay, so what do you mean by consists of past, present, and future believers? It actually means that a church is, uh, as we see in eight, in Matthew 18, uh, verse 16, where he says, you are Petros, it's on this pe Petra that I will start my church, and uh, uh, the powers of Hades will not have control over you, will not prevail over you. So it actually means that from... After when Jesus went on the Pentecost, 50 days after his after his resurrection, the church started like that, uh, 120 people plus the 3,000, like that, like that, like that. And up to now, we are in billions. So all those people are still part of his church. And the rapture, all those people will be part of his church. The fallen, the quick, and <laughs> like that faster. Thank you. Yeah, very good. I mean, that's a good, a good way of thinking, Lubega. I mean, uh, I was quite taken aback when you said past, present, and future believers, but when you explained it, it uh, brought much clarity. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, good thoughts, and uh, thank you for sharing. Yeah. So um, uh, the church, the Greek word for church is ecclesia. And ek means out of, and klesis means a calling or to call. So basically it means, um, ecclesia means called out once, uh, or those who are called out of something into something else. So it's basically called out 
or a calling out of, okay, because ek is out of and klesis is a calling or to call. So it is a calling out of or to call out of, okay. So um, it was basically used among the Greeks for a body of uh, citizens who gathered to discuss the affairs of the state. So um, all of those who were the part of the Greek culture, when they used to, the citizens used to meet to discuss the affairs of the state, uh, the gathering was called as uh, the church. Uh, so in its literal sense, um, uh, the word church simply refers to a gathering together of those who've been called out uh, for a definite purpose. Okay, so it simply means that, uh, you know, those a uh, gathering of those who've been called out uh, for a definite pers purpose. So who are the called? When we say that church is a gathering of those who are called out of for a definite purpose, or we say that the, the Greek word ecclesia, uh, ek is out of and klesis is a calling or to call, what do we mean by, uh, we say, you know, called out. So who are the called? Who are the called? Is it specific people that God has called? How can we define this word called? Born again believers. Okay, thank you. It's basically those who have responded to the heavenly call. Those who have responded uh, to believe and put their faith in uh, Jesus Christ. So it is those people who are, are uh, the called. Okay, and they called out. So when we say called out, what do we mean by that? Okay, Lubega says uh, the called are those believers in Christ who have confessed their sins and baptized. Yes, thank you. Uh, who are the called out? I mean, what the what do we mean by called out? We're basically defining uh, the church, uh, the word church. So we're saying the church simply refers to gathering. Uh, together of those who have been called out for a definite purpose. So we're trying to define each of these words in the definition. So we said called are uh, people who responded to the uh, to a heavenly call, or we can say that people who are born again believers, people who are believers in Christ, who've confessed their sins and baptized. So who are the? Uh, what do we mean by called out? Called out means people basically who have been called out of darkness into God's light, uh, called out of uh, sin into uh, righteous, uh, to being uh, righteous, to being justified, to being uh, holy in God's sight. Uh, people who are called out of the world into God's uh, heavenly kingdom. Okay, people who are called out of. Uh, being uh, slaves of sin and Satan, uh, to being uh, sons and daughters, to being children of God, to being a uh, part of God's family, to being called the family of God. So called out are basically people who come out of the world. Okay, So we see that we are called out to gather together. Uh, so the word here, is, you know, oh, oh, as we're defining the church, it is a gathering together of those who are called out. So the called out are to gather together. Uh, so what does it uh, imply? Or what does it uh, tell us about the church? When we say that we are called out to gather together, uh, what do we understand by this phrase? For me, 
I think there are people who have dedicated their life for the service of Isaac, the Lord. Thank you, Isaac. Those who have dedicated their lives to service of the Lord. Lubega says to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Uh, so we are called out to gather together means a church is a place where people gather together and it's not just about individuals. So it's not about uh, me, I, me, myself. It's not about my preferences, what I like. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, sharing with others, caring for others, supporting others, putting others ahead of our needs, putting uh, uh, people above us. Okay, so it's calling of people to gather together uh, to worship God and not just as uh, individuals. And the last phrase we can look at is we're called out to gather together for a definite purpose. Okay. So we saw what is called, we saw what is called out, we saw what is called out to gather together. Uh, now we're looking at uh, called out to gather together for a definite purpose. Now what does it mean we're called out to gather for a definite purpose? Any idea what does it mean when you're saying that we are called out to gather together for a definite purpose? Um, according to my understanding, like, uh, uh, like we are called out. Uh, to fulfill the purposes and plans of God over our life and over the church as a uh, church. Thank you, Zelatori. That's good. Yes, we are called uh, as a people, uh, as a church, as a, uh, you know, a, a, a church, a, a community together or as a local church, not to fulfill our plans, our visions, our goals, uh, but it is to pursue God's uh, uh, heavenly purposes, his plans, his goals that he wants to establish in and uh, in our city, in the region, in the geographical area that the church is, the local churches or the church together as a local community, as a community uh, in that specific city, nation, uh, region, area uh, to bring about God's uh, purposes, to fulfill his plan and purposes for that region, for that city, for that uh, nation or for that geographical area. So it is uh, us who are called out uh, together and it's not for us to just do things that we like to do what we feel like doing but it's to uh, basically do what God has planned um, for uh, the city or for that specific region or for the neighborhood uh, for the geographical area in and through the church okay so that is basically the definition of um, uh, the word church now um, if you notice uh, as we're going through the lesson, there will be some things that I've added in. Uh, so it's not part of your notes. You would uh, want to take down notes for yourself. You're welcome to do so. Uh, we we'll look at the important truths about the church, uh, which is the body of Christ. Okay. Uh, so the first truth is the church is Christ's body. Okay. It's um, We'll see this in Colossians chapter 1, verses 18 and 24. And Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. So can one, one of you please read Colossians 1, 18 and 24. And someone else read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, please. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Verse 24, for I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. So it's very clearly mentioned here that, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the body uh, uh, I mean, the church is Christ's body. We see that in Colossians 1.18. It says, and he is the head of the body, which is the church. 
And um, we see that uh, in verse 24, it says, for the sake of his body, which is the church. So the church is uh, the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. Can one of you please read that? Ephesians chapter 1, 22 and 23. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Okay. Oh, sorry, I read chapter 2. I'll read chapter 1. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things every, everywhere with himself. Amen. Thank you, Jeffina. So here we see that, um, you know, he's the head of all things um, uh, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. He again here, uh, uh, the church is referred to as the body of Christ. Okay, so that's the first uh, important uh, truth about the church. The second one is that church is eternal. Uh, why do we say that the church is eternal? Why do we say that the church is eternal? Because Christ, who is the head of the church, is eternal. Okay, he is God. Uh, he has... Uh, no beginning and no end. He is eternal. And because uh, the church is the body of Christ, and because Christ is eternal, the church is also eternal. The third thing is the church is the instrument to execute Christ's uh, purpose. So we see that whatever the head commands, uh, the head is Christ himself. Uh, the body executes. That means uh, the body does what uh, Christ wants us to do here. What is his plan, his purpose. And, uh, uh, and it, uh, the church is here to execute uh, the command of the head who is Christ himself, the head of the church, both here in this present age and in the millennium. Okay, so even... Uh, when, as we're spending our days here on the earth, and even as we, uh, you know, spend time under God's rule and reign, that is for a thousand-year period, the millennium, uh, we see that you know um, the body uh, that is uh, the church, the body of Christ, uh, will execute uh, the commands of uh, uh, the head of the church, that is Christ Himself, and we see this. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 18, where it says, But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. The fourth truth is that every believer is a member of Christ's body, which is the eternal church. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse uh, 27 uh, says that now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Okay, so each one of us are uh, members of uh, the body of Christ, which is the church, uh, members individually, but we are uh, to worship Him uh, together because we are called out together and together we are to fulfill the purposes of God. Okay, so that is uh, some of the important truths about the church, uh, which is the body of Christ. We look at some important truths concerning the local church. Okay, uh, the local church is called the household of God. So if you look at uh, various scripture passages, uh, the church is referred to in certain places as the household of God. Uh, one of the uh, scripture verses uh, uh, that mentions this is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. So can one of you please read that? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. First Timothy, uh, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Anyone would like to read that? Uh, 
First Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 and 15. I'm writing these things to you now even though I hope to be with you soon so that if I'm delayed you will know how people must conduct themselves in the household of God. This is the church of the living God which is the pillar and the foundation of the truth. Thank you Jeffina. So here it says you know uh, talks about the house of God or the household of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and ground of the truth. okay so the local church uh, in a certain place is the family of god in that uh, place so church is a household so when we talk about a house uh, who lives in a house it's not an individual person uh, but it's a family that lives in a house so when we talk about church the household of god we see that it's uh, the local church is a certain place where the family of god in that uh, in that place dwells or meets together fellowships together worships together uh, and since it is a household of god and has a concept of a family uh, you know family is all about relationships Uh, where we love each other we care for each other we support each other we are concerned about each other we help each other and so uh, uh, a local church in a certain place uh, is just not the family of god but it's a family of god uh, where we are related to one another just like any human family is and hence uh, we need to uh, show love care support uh, concern uh, for each other and even uh, as we see in a family uh, in a family as a unit we have a, a father we have a mother we have uh, children uh, children who may be babies uh, uh, or some of them would be uh, you know a preteen some of them uh, 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 you know uh, elementary stage some of them teenage stage uh, youth or uh, young adults um, uh you know uh and also maybe uh married uh, but staying together with the uh, the parents as a family so we see that in the family there are people at different stages uh of uh, maturity uh we have a father who is uh, kind of mature and mother who's mature in their age when they experience we have uh, toddlers or uh, children who are in the primary stage or in the preteen teen stage young adults uh or uh, you know uh, who are already adults and then we have grandparents as well who are well matured uh, uh in their age and in their experience and so we see in a family we have uh, people at different stages of growth and maturity and so also in a church uh, you know uh, which is a family of god uh, we have people at different spiritual uh, levels different uh, levels of maturity some of them who are just uh, babies in their uh, in their faith walk uh, just born again believers some of them who are strong mature in their faith some of them who are uh, you know uh, you know not babies and not even too mature but you know are growing to uh, into full maturity so we have people at different um, uh, stages uh, of growth and maturity in a family which means that we need to be patient uh with each other we need to be supportive of each other we need to love each other we need to encourage exhort build support uh and grow and learn from each other and uh, you know uh, uh share our experiences so that the people can learn and people can mature and uh, you know all of us growing into the fullness uh, uh of the god and fullness of christ that has been uh, given to us so the first thing uh, we see that is the local church is called the household of god the second one is that the local church is the physical expression of the spiritual body of christ in a certain uh, geographical area now what do we mean by this that the local church is a physical expression of the spiritual body of christ in a certain uh, geographical area now as the lord sees us as god sees us in a city or in a region he sees us as one church one city wide church a uh, comprising of all believers from uh, different local churches so you know for uh, some of us uh, you know we kind of uh, 
guard ourselves in our own churches, uh, our denominations, our liturgies, our culture in that church. We don't want to mix with, uh, uh, with the other churches in the region, in the city. But how God sees us is he looks us at, at us as one church, one big citywide church, uh, which is comprising of all believers from all uh, local churches. And um, uh, serving in that city uh, or uh, serving the church in the city are uh, many local churches. There are many local churches. There are many ministers of God. There are many uh, ministries, different organizations. And hence, God allocates for each one, whether it's a, it's a ministry, a, a Christian organization, whether it's a minister who is an evangelist, uh, an itinerary evangelist, a missionary, uh, or maybe just a, a, a local church, God allocates to each one of us specific roles, callings, and spheres of influence. So each one of us, uh, you know, are called to different um, uh, uh, different needs that are in the in the city. God sees it, and you know, He uh, He's the head, and He's the one who commands. Uh, you know, we are called out for a definite purpose. Uh, we looked at it in the definition of the church, and uh, the purpose is not what we purpose, but what the head purposes, what Christ purposes. So, based on the needs of the society, or based on the needs of the city, or based Based on what God wants to be uh, accomplished and uh, uh, done, or what He has purposed even before the foundations of the world, uh, what He wants to establish in the city, He uses each um, each one to minister uh, in different different spheres. Uh, because each one of us cannot do everything together. So, uh, for example. Uh, uh, in our city, maybe if the suicide rate is very high, then we can have organizations that spring up, uh, which meets the need of uh, of uh, counseling people, so, uh, Christian organizations, or a church can basically um, cater to uh, the needs of those who are emotionally hurting, disturbed, uh, uh, suicidal, uh, broken, uh, you know, or we can have, uh, uh, we have a church like that. We basically uh, has programs and uh, seminars and uh, uh, weekend schools that minister to uh, those who are broken, hurting, emotionally disturbed. Or we can have churches who God raises up for apostolic uh, uh, ministry, uh, churches God raises up to be uh, engaged in largely in just mission activity uh, or churches that are, uh, you know, um, uh, ministering to the uh, people in the lower uh, social strata or lower social status, uh, basically to the, the, the migrant workers or basically to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to the poor. Uh, and we have uh, churches that are uh, catering to the needs of the intellectual people, uh, those in um, uh, you know the business field, those who are highly educated, apologetics, and so we have you know different churches, different uh, organizations that God raises up uh, to cater to specific needs, sometimes to women, to children, uh, uh, you know, to. Uh, 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 those who are involved in uh, caught up in uh, sex trafficking so you know different needs of the society god just raises up uh, organizations people to minister the local churches he burdens their hearts to minister to specific um, uh, areas so god allocates to each of us specific roles callings and spheres of uh, influence now, now suppose you are in a city where there is a largely uh, uh, a, a community of students because it is a uh, 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 you know uh, educational hub uh, so you know god is stirring your heart up to uh, minister or reach out to students in the city whatever it is you know um, God is calling, uh, you know, he gives us the plan, the strategies and the calling and uh, each of them are uh, doing their specific roles and together, you know, each of the local churches, ministries, each of the uh, uh, organizations, Christian organizations together uh, as a whole, 
you know, as a church, a local community as a whole, you know, is reaching out or catering to the needs of the uh, society or to the city. So each local church and those who are part of that local church have their respective uh, functions uh, in and toward the citywide church. Okay. The third important truth concerning the local church is that the local church in a certain area is Christ's uh, instrument in that area to execute uh, Christ's purposes. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's basically that uh, uh, each of us who comprise of the local church and who are part of the citywide church uh, in, the, in our specific cities, we are God's hands, we are his feet, we are his voice in that region. Uh, hence, every local church should see themselves uh, on a godly assignment or an heavenly assignment, uh, we have a responsibility toward God and toward our community and beyond uh, to, to do what Jesus wants uh, to be done in and through us. Okay, so this is uh, some important truths concerning the local church. Any questions so far? So we basically looked at what is the definition of, and the meaning of the word church. Uh, we saw the important truths concerning uh, the church, which is the body of Christ. And then we looked at some important truths concerning the local church. Any questions? If there are no questions, then we'll move ahead to what is the mission of the local church. Now, the mission of the local church can be categorized in five main areas. Uh, so what do you think is the mission of a local church? Before we look at what's given in our notes, uh, what is your idea about the mission of the local church? Any thoughts? What is the mission of the local church? All of us are part of a church, a local church. So what is the mission of a local church? Ma'am, the main mission of the local church is to like, there are many communities around and there are many souls to win souls for Christ and to share the gospel, to do the ministry. Uh, thank you, Siddhikenu. So it's basically evangelism and missions. Uh, yes, Lubega says evangelize and win souls for Christ. Thank you. What else is the mission of the, lo uh, of the local church? Other than evangelism and missions, which is important. And the first one. Uh, thank you. Fellowship with believers. Yes. Evangelism. Evangelism and. and Hello. Discipleship. discipleship. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, the mission, one of the mission of the local church is to bring everybody together onto one umbrella to preach gospel to them because in the in the local environment that is where you see idolatry worshiping of idols so by telling them about the lord jesus christ which is compared to evangelism but it's more deeper but it's by bringing everybody together local church is the foundation of the of of, of a mission thank you man Thank you, success. Yes, it's uh, it's evangelism and missions. So evangelizing people, bringing them under the church, uh, bringing them as one unit. Yes, evangelism and missions. Thank you. Um, uh, evangelism and discipleship. Thank you, Subhashish. Uh, Siddhikunu says, sharing the love of God with everyone. Yes, so that's again evangelism. Uh, Bega says, guidance and counseling for believers. Yes, thank you. Jafina to help them know more about Christ and to help them to stay strong in their relationship with him. Yes, thank you, Jafina. So that's basically discipling uh, people uh, in Christ so that they grow mature in Christ's uh, likeness. Anyone else? Thank you for sharing your inputs. Yeah, so uh, the mission of the local church, the first one is evangelism and missions, reaching out to people with the gospel, uh, basically fulfilling the great commission to go and preach and teach and baptize in the, uh, the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, 
discipleship is second, disciple uh, uh, training them to be more Christ-like in their character, conduct, and service. Third thing is uh, praise and worship. Uh, you know, when uh, praise and worship is very powerful, when we praise and worship, it changes the spiritual atmosphere of the city. Uh, when we praise and worship, it kind of breaks the uh, strongholds uh, in the demonic realm. It's like the stronghold are just covering us like an umbrella in the city. Um, and when we praise and worship, it's like just breaks through those uh, strongholds and uh, it opens up uh, for God's rule, his reign, his activity, his power, uh, his presence, his kingdom to just infiltrate, just flood, to just uh, sweep over that city and that nation. So uh, praise and worship is very powerful. It changes the spiritual atmosphere of our city. Uh, it creates an atmosphere for spiritual ministry, even as we gather together for God to work in our midst. As I said, it just breaks all the strongholds. It breaks the spirit of strife, jealousy, division, uh, you know, every unclean spirit. It just breaks every demonic stronghold uh, powers in the, uh, in the heavenly realms and just uh, opens up uh, for God's rule, his reign, his activity, his presence, uh, uh, his kingdom to just flood through. So, you know, we can experience uh, freedom, uh, bondages to be broken, uh, healing, wholeness, uh, uh, answers to uh, questions that we're having, uh, you know, heaviness that can just be lifted. All this happens, you know, when uh, we praise and worship uh, God because it creates an atmosphere for spiritual ministry, uh, even as we gather together. And uh, God speaks in the midst of worshiping and uh, a praying uh, congregation, okay? So if we thought that... Uh, uh, fasting prayer is boring. If you thought, uh, uh, you know, just going for a prayer meeting is boring, uh, we don't see anything happen. Maybe we are not uh, experiencing uh, anything uh, physically, but yeah, things are happening um, in the spiritual realm that things are happening in the uh, spiritual realm, in our city, in our nation, in our homes, even as we are praying, even over our lives, we do not know. You know, things are just being, uh, we are being set free from so many strongholds that are coming against us and uh, just opens up a room and space for God's uh, intervention in our lives. And then we can, uh, f you know, experience more of God in a powerful way. And also we know that uh, the mission of the local church is fellowship, uh, you know, because we are living together. Uh, the church is called the household of God. Uh, we are a family, uh, living as a family. So there is fellowship. Uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, interaction with each other, uh, learning from each other, helping, supporting each other. The fifth thing is uh, that, um, you know, um, the mission of the local church is uh, ministry. It's basically equipping uh, the saints for ministry. Now, who are uh, the saints? Who are called the saints? When we read this, uh, this word saints in uh, the New Testament, uh, who does it refer to? Born again believers. Thank you. It's uh, born again believers. All of us who are part of the church are called saints. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, believers in the church. Yes, thank you, Lubega. So ministry uh, uh, of equipping all of the saints for ministry. Okay. So it's basically equipping the people or believers in the church to minister. So we have to see each member uh, in the body of Christ as, uh, uh, you know, as, uh, as ministers of God. It's not only the pastors, the evangelists, those who are called to ministry offices uh, who have to minister, but each one of us, uh, you know, are called the priests of God, First Peter, okay? It says that uh, we are a royal priesthood. So each one of us are called priests of God. We're the high priests of God. Uh, we are the priests of God. And hence, each one of us, uh, you know, should be, um, uh, you know, each member should be fully equipped, activated in uh, the gifts of the Spirit, 
and uh, activated in the areas that uh, God is calling us to minister. And we need to be released to, the fu to fulfill uh, the calling that God has placed in our lives. And that is what a local church should do. So a local church is basically uh, not just to come on a, on a Sunday and to worship and, and you know, to hear some good uh, messages and uh, to fellowship with each other and uh, to go away. But it is uh, basically also a place where we are equipping each believer uh, and uh, for them to be activated and to be for them to be released to fulfill the calling that God has uh, on their lives. It's also a place where uh, we are uh, equipping believers to discover and exercise the gifts for the edifying of the body of Christ. So we are, uh, uh, you know, equipping each one of them uh, to discover uh, their talents, uh, their calling, and also to be activated in the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, um, uh, so that, you know, the church of Christ or the body of Christ can be edified, can, uh, can, be, uh, can grow, can uh, be strengthened in their faith. And also, uh, you know, the local church... Uh, is a place where uh, people or saints are equipped to impact the world around us. It's not just our neighborhood, our city, but also uh, the world. Uh, and it is by sending uh, ministers out of the church who are equipped, who are built, who are activated in the gifts of the Spirit, activated in their faith, uh, uh, and know their uh, specific calling uh, and they're released to fulfill their calling, uh, sending them out uh, to, uh, you know, to uh, go as apostles, prophets, evangelists, missionaries, uh, or also to go out uh, as pastors to reproduce the church of the same kind as the mother church, as, as the main uh, church. So, uh, you know, uh, building up, uh, various churches in the city or in the nation or in the nations of the world. So a well-formed local church will have all of these uh, uh, five dim uh, dimensions in proper balance and emphasis. That means uh, a local church, you know, uh, has to pay attention or give good attention or emphasize all of these five points, missions and evangelism, discipleship, praise and worship, uh, fellowship and equipping uh, the saints uh, for uh, ministry, all of this, this has to be emphasized and has to be done in proper balance. Okay. So we look at uh, more in detail what a local church is. A local church we saw is the body of Christ. Uh, we also saw that the local church is a family uh, and uh, the local church is uh, an army. Okay, uh, we saw that uh, the local church is a body. Uh, we also looked at uh, how the local church is a family. Uh, we said that in several places in the scripture, the term house of God, uh, the household is used to refer to both the corporate body of Christ, uh, that is a citywide uh, church, or uh, also uh, uh, in reference to the local church. So the local church or the citywide church is a house of God. It's basically a spiritual house. Uh, we read this, um, uh, you know, in uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, uh, where it says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the household of faith. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 uh, to 22, uh, uh, again talks about, uh, now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, uh, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of um, God. Okay, so again, the word household of God mentioned there. Uh, we read First Timothy chapter three, verse fifteen earlier in uh, uh, when we looked at uh, uh, the local church as uh, the house of household of God. Uh, we saw that in First Timothy chapter three, verse fifteen, it says that uh, you know uh, I write to you that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of. God. Now, the Greek word for uh, house is oikos, okay, 
uh, and uh, it basically refers to a dwelling, okios or okios, uh, which basically refers to uh, dwelling. And so, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, in a house, it's which is a dwelling place. Uh, we know that uh, the implication is that a family dwells there. Uh, so we we already said that uh, you know the church or the local church is a family of God, uh, and. Uh, as born again believers, we are all born into the family of God. Uh, we are born as spiritual sons and daughters of God, and hence we are uh, part of one big family, one same family that is the family of God. We read about this in uh, John chapter 1, verse 12, and 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. So we see that we, the church is a spiritual family, a spiritual body, where each one of us are sons and daughters, and all of us, you know, uh, irrespective of our uh, various denominations, uh, our liturgies, uh, the style of worship, uh, everything we belong to one family that is, uh, we belong to one same family that is a family of um, God. And because the local church is a family, uh, there are certain practices that we should pursue. Uh, the first thing is that we need to walk in a brotherly and sisterly love. Uh, how do we walk in brotherly and sisterly love? How do we walk in brotherly and sisterly love? Come on, how do we walk uh, in brotherly and sisterly love in a church? Observing and caring for the needs of others who are part of the family in the church. Thank you, Isaac. Yes, observing, seeing, looking out for people who are in need, uh, helping them out in their need, uh, supporting them. Yes, thank you. How else do we uh, walk in brotherly and sisterly love? We need to be kind to each other, uh, give preference to one another, uh, like it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Can one of you read that, please? Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Yes, thank you, Jeffina. Uh, picking them up when they fall, when people... Uh, fall short of the glory of God when they sin, uh, when they go away from God's ways, his standards, and we know that uh, we need to be patient, loving, gentle, correct them in love, uh, speak the truth in love, correct them in love, and uh, restore them uh, back in their relationship with God. Thank you, Jeffina. Can one of you please read Romans 12 verse 10, please? Romans 12, verse 10. It says, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in order giving, in honor giving preference to one another. So here the scripture exhausts us or, uh, you know, encourages us uh, to be kind and affectionate to one another in love and in honor, giving preference to one another. It's not all about I, me, myself, but it's giving preference to one another. So be kind to each other, giving preference to one another. The second thing that we can walk in brotherly and sisterly love is to do good to those who are of the household of faith. Um, Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Can one of you please read Galatians chapter 6, verse 10? Yes, thank you, Abu Bakr. It's uh, also praying for the well-being. Uh, that's how we show love for people. Yes, praying for them. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, verses 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us 
do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Thank you. So here it says that we need to do good to those in the household of faith, especially to those who are, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we need to do good to all, but especially to those who are the household of faith. That means household of faith is talking about the church, the church of God which is called the household. Uh, so those who are believers in the faith, one in faith with us, uh, we need to be especially doing good to them. Okay, uh, we'll stop here. We we'll look at uh, more about how we can walk in brotherly and sisterly love uh, in the local church as people belonging to the local church. And we we'll look at uh, more about how church is a family in uh, our next class on Wednesday. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, then we'll uh, end class. Thank you all for joining. Um, have a blessed day and a, a blessed and a restful and refreshing weekend. And I'll see you on Monday for our Christology class. Okay, thank you all. Bye.